Hi, whether you're here because you bought the previous version of my digital planner piece or you're thinking about buying a digital planner for 2025 or you already bought the newest version of the 2025 digital planner piece, it's good to have you here. I have a video on the previous version, I'm going to tag it somewhere here, uh, which is an in-depth walkthrough of the planner and most of the things still stay and are valid this or the next year or two in 2025. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go through what is new and what has changed so you have an idea what you're going to get. So let's start. Now this planner is uh, intended for iPad devices, the aspect ratio. I'm going to also create or I'm creating already and I'm going to launch very soon the Android version, which is the same in terms of functionality. It, the only thing that is different is uh, the aspect ratio. If you're an Android user, your device is longer on the side than an iPad most likely. So it's just a slight change of the design. If you're an Android user, you're more than welcome to stay here because most of the things I'll be saying will apply to you too. So just like last year, you're going to get or you can purchase either the portrait version of the planner and some of the covers as this one, like this one, stay. And um, of course, you can also purchase the uh, landscape version of the planner. And today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the landscape version. Rest assured that the portrait version is the same. It's just the landscape version fits the screen better and you'll be able to see better what I'm doing. Uh, for starters, we have a couple new covers. My favorite for this year might be this one. So new cover designs, which I'm very happy about. And this is the index page. The index page hasn't changed much. However, you might notice that there's a new icon here for the meal planner. Now, when I click on that, it will take me to the meal planner main page. And here you can see you have, I have indicated the weeks you're uh, editing basically within the meal planner. There's 53 weeks, one for each week of the year of 2025. And before I click on any numbers here or before I click on any meal planners, I want you to see um, what happens if you go to weekly meal planners. So I just select a random week from the date picker, which is the nine dots here at the top right corner. And if I go to, uh, let's say January week two, here you can toggle the two uh, different weekly views. Um, and each of them will have this tiny icon of the meal planner too. Uh, this one has it right here. So let's take a look at what, what happens if you click on the meal planner icon directly from the weekly views. It will take me to the respective weeks, which is week two, January 6th to January 12th. Now you have this back button here. And if you click on that, it will take you back to the weekly planners. Uh, let's test the other one. I'll click on that, January 6th to January 12th. And if I go back, it will take me back to the weekly planners and I can toggle the two different views. Now you will always have, let me move my face here. You will always have the icon at the bottom, uh, which is the main shortcut to the weekly meal planners, which will take you exactly where the one from the index page will take you, which is the the main page now i can also choose the week i want to edit in the meal planners which is week two so january 6th to january 12th i'm going to click on the number two and it will take me to week two january 6th to 12th again i can go back but the back button will take me back to weekly planners weekly planner pages now let's go back to the index page. If you're coming from 2024, you will notice that you're familiar with the, the icons here for the different templates within the planner. Wellness, finance, productivity, and lifestyle. Let's start with lifestyle because we're going to have, we will have a few more templates for 2025. And since we have 
integrated meal planner within the planner itself we i replaced the meal planner template here with an outfit planner this is what it looks like again let me move my face and let's go back to lifestyle templates and then uh, you have a manifestation planner this is what it looks like and the next one that is new is intermittent fasting tracker and uh, we also have a few more new templates in the productivity um, category which is class schedule so whoever goes to school will be happy about that and I felt like we needed more to-do lists. So there's a daily to-do list if you just want to dump your ideas or if you if you have a lot to do. Uh, so this is the daily to-do list where you can uh, list the top three things that you need to do, all the things you need to do, things you need to leave for tomorrow and things that you have scheduled. And there's also priority to-do list, which will force you to prioritize what you need to focus on at this moment, which is, so that's why you have this, these categories here, must do, should do, could do, and if I have time. Let's go back. Uh, I have felt like uh, assignment tracker is needed as well. And it is because if you own a business or if you run a household, basically, or if you manage a group of people, uh, at your job, this is going to be helpful to you. So we have that. And that's it for uh, the productivity templates. Of course, we have uh, all the templates from last year. Uh, this is just a sneak peek of things that you already know. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't think it's necessary for and it, and it would have taken a long time. So this is just a sneak peek of the things that you will find within the planner. Now, one thing that is new from last year, last year we had the Google Calendar icon that allowed you to quickly create reminders in your Google Calendar. This year, I've also added the iCalendar icon or Apple Calendar icon. And these two work differently. I'm gonna explain how. But as an Apple user, if you are an Apple user, you might want to set up your shortcut first so you can start using the icon or the abbreviation, the link to your iCalendar. So you want to go to the reference page, which is the last page of the planner. And here you have a tiny note that says click here to add the shortcut to your Apple device. If you click on the link that's underlined here, uh, you're going to get a a warning window that it's an external ring uh, link and that uh, the basically a new app is going to be open which is okay I'm gonna click yes it's going to open my shortcut app on my Apple device and I want to add the shortcut now I already have the shortcut added to uh, my shortcut so um, I'm going to hit cancel here but you're gonna go ahead and add the shortcut to your shortcuts now let's go from the date picture let's go to a random day January 2nd for example and here at the top you will notice two icons if you know the 2024 version you already know that this is the uh, Google Calendar icon if I click on that it's going to open again it's going to open my Google Calendar on the specific day which is January 2nd now I need to edit the time let's say 12 45 p.m. And I'm going to add the title of the event and then save it to my Google Calendar. Now, the thing is that Google Calendar links and Apple Calendar links, they work on different two different logics. So while I can add a date specific link to the Google Calendar, which will open the event creation on the specific date, that is not the case with the Apple Calendar. Uh, the Apple Calendar or the link works on a different logic. So if I click on that and hit yes, it's going to open my Google Calendar and uh, it's going to ask me how much in advance I want to be reminded of the event. So I'm going to go uh, one day before or you can you can click none and hit done. And then I'm going to name the event. 
And the Apple Calendar icon is by default is going to create or start creating the event on the current date, which is today, which is today is uh, October the 16th. So that's why I have this date here. Now you might want to double click or double tap in that and choose the date uh, that you want, which mine was uh, January 2nd. And I'm going to change the time to 12 45 p.m. Preferably. p.m. And uh, you can edit a few more things here, but I'm going to just add the event to my uh, Google Calendar. Now, I want to allow the shortcut to always create events uh, just like just like I did now uh, in my Google Calendar. So I'm going to click on always allow and now the event will be added to uh, to my calendar. Here it is. We also have a whole new set of stickers, which I'm very happy about because I think they're cute. Apart from the stickers that you are already used to, I've added a few more stickers. So let's take a look at those. I'm going to add stickers here. If you need to know how to add stickers in bulk, I'm going to uh, tag the video somewhere here. Or if you need to know how to add stickers in general, I'm going to add the video here. Uh, so I'm going to add stickers here. Click again. And the new collection of stickers is this one. I am really happy with these. Now you can resize it, put it whenever you need, like so. So I'm going to add a few more so you have an idea what they look like. Of course, uh, the colors are in the same color scheme as the planner itself. So these are the new stickers, but you also have a um, collection of widgets, which I'm also very ha happy about. So you can customize the planner to your needs even further. I'm going to import them from the widgets folder. By the way, these are the, the folders uh, of the stickers that you will receive. Drawings, playful, playful. This folder contains the stickers that I've just added that you've just seen. These are uh, the ones from previous year and widgets are also new. So I'm going to add a new widget. Uh, I'm going to create a sticker collection for this. And I'm going to add this. Now, of course, you can resize the sticker, place it where you need it. It fits perfectly here, for example. And now what I can do, this is your, this widget is for anxiety tracker, basically. So I can go and take the highlighter and I can choose the highlighter and just indicate in here what I need to. So. These are the widgets. There's plenty more widgets. I'm not going to go through of them again, but there's plenty that you can customize the planner with. And there's also plenty more of the playful stickers that I find really pretty. As for the overall design or the core of the planner, it remained the same because I wanted a smooth transition from 2024 to 2025. So you still have the uh, magic wand here. Uh, to help you generate affirmations for the day or uh, things to be grateful for if you need. Again, you can change up. If you don't like the combo, you can change up the three that appear here. Uh, everything else stayed pretty much the same. There are a few changes to the design. Like, for example, I added lines instead of just um, a box or a rectangle because I find it easier to write on. Let me know what you think of this change in the comments. I thought this might be better. Maybe I'm mistaken, who knows? And uh, everything else is exactly the way you're used to, include, including monthly reflections and monthly habits, just like here. And uh, also the design of the weekly pages, the main focus box changed into lines instead of a rectangle. This uh, design also slightly changed. The lines are indicated in alternating colors, so it's easier to, to know where you're writing. And I think that might be it more or less. Here you have still 
just like last year, your custom custom pages and your note taking layouts, which are the same as last year so that the transition is smoother. I hope this helped you. If you need any more videos or any, on any part of the planner, let me know. I'll be more than happy to make more. I hope you will love this planner as much as I do because I think it's great. So have a great day and have a great 2025, y'all.